tick tock, tick tock. How time flies when you're having fun. Hi everybody, it's Steven here for Bland Designs and this is my weekly vlog which is usually on Mondays but today it's Sunday, May the 21st, 2017 and the reason I'm doing it one day early is because tomorrow I'm having a technician come out here and my whole uh, internet and television system is being upgraded to FIBE and which is going to give me higher speeds, um, I hope and they're going to be here most of the day doing it. So they claim. They say five to six hours. I don't know. Wait and see how that happens. Anyways, it's also the long weekend, the Victoria holiday, which I mentioned in my last vlog. And uh, so, which also makes tomorrow a little unusual because I didn't think they'd be working tomorrow. Um, I guess it's not a statutory holiday anymore. So uh, anyways, uh, so that's why I'm doing it on the Sunday. So what am I going to talk about this week? Got new coffee. Uh, this coffee, it's a Keurig uh, coffee, but it's a, uh, I'm not sure which company made this particular cup, but this is supposed to have chili in it. So let's see. Yeah, no. I don't know. Tastes like coffee. There might be a slight hint of a little bite to it. I don't know. I like hot things, like spicy hot things. So that's why I thought I'd try it. Oh, yeah, wait, on the back of my throat, there is a little something. But anyways, would I buy it again? Yeah, I don't know. I only got a couple of cu a couple of little capsules of it. So anyways, enough to do about my coffee. Let, what are we talking about uh, this week? Well, what have I been working on? Been working on another shoe. Went off to the Value Village and picked up another pair of heels. They were turquoise this time. Actually, they were kind of pretty uh, in their natural state. I've started working on this. Now, remember those paints I told you about, the PBO paints? That's what's on this. I just dripped all the colors onto this shoe. And uh, they do come up quite shiny still, which is nice. It means I, I'm really not going to have to varnish it or anything, I don't think. So this is what the color of the shoe looked like on the outside too. It's kind of a pretty turquoisey, tealy color. I don't know what you'd call it. Um, Actually, I may just paint the. I may just leave the inside of the shoe as it is, but I want to put something inside of here, and I don't know what to do. So, this kind of makes me think of couture clothing, dresses, designer wear. So I've got some dyes and uh, some other items that have sort of a sewing theme um, with them. Maybe I'll put some wooden spools in here. Maybe glitter them up. Um, wrap some wire around, you know, in a, uh, one of those dress dummies, where they call it a, is it called a Nancy or something? Um, I think I've got a, a die cut for that, and I might make it a 3D kind of thing. I don't know. These ideas are just going in my head. Heaven only knows what it'll turn out to be like. And put those in. We'll see. I'll show it to you when it's finished. What else have I been working on? Okay. I've done a whole video on this, a whole process video on this. And uh, it started out as being one thing, it ended up being something different, but it is a piece of abstract art, at least I call it an abstract art piece. And here it is, try to get it all into the shot. And I'm really happy with this. There is layers upon layers of things going on here, so you'll need to watch the video if you're interested. Uh, it's one of my crap videos, it's crap video number 12 abstract art piece and I take you through the whole process of how this evolved into this. Walter even said that he liked it. Well, he said it was okay. That is high praise from Walter. If he doesn't like something, usually he'll just say it's fine. So I'm up a notch, but I don't care. I like it anyways. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this. Um, and what else? So speaking of painting and that, you know that uh, last week I showed you my acrylic pourings on a on a record, and I told you that I might make one into a clock. 
Well, I did, so I'm going to, since the clock is hanging on the wall where you can't see it right now, and since I'm videotaping this on my iPad, it's a little easier for me to insert uh, a very short little uh, video clip here showing you my clock, so I'm going to do that. So as you can see in the teaser for this week's vlog, I've uh, made my clock out of my poured acrylic record. And I showed you last week on the vlog how I do those. So I went to Michael's and I bought clock movements for this. And I can tell you one thing. The, this clock movement is cheap. Really cheap. And I don't mean in what Michael's was charging for it. I mean in its quality. Uh, for If you'll notice, my hour hand and my minute hand are two different colors. That's because I think they manufactured it incorrectly. If I turned the... Uh, our hand around to the gold side it wouldn't grab onto the spindle and uh, move around as it should on the clock um, so I had to turn it the other way and so I've got a silvery color and a gold color hand not that I really care that much this was more of an experiment you'll also notice that the numbers they are very cheap and I didn't get the spacing quite right on those my 11 and 12 11 should have been a little higher um, there's they're supposed to be uh, sticky on the back well no that that sticky had all dried up so I had to glue them and would you believe it this little battery optic giz gizmo cost $14.99 it is not worth anything more than two bucks in fact if you go on amazon.ca you can buy them for about two bucks the only difference is they don't come with the numbers but you want to know something I think if I was to make a second one of these I'd make my own numbers and I'd make them bigger or I'd see if I could find some kind of numbers somewhere that are bigger that I could stick on. Uh, I used a 45% off coupon though on this and that's the only way that I would have, I wouldn't have paid $14.99 for it. It is just cheap. The ha hands on here bend so easily when you put them on. But anyways, I'm looking at this more as a decorative piece as opposed to like an actual accurate time piece. Although right now it doesn't seem to be doing too bad a job. It, it seems to be keeping fairly accurate time. Um, anyways, that's what I did with the poured acrylic record. So there are some flaws with that clock, as I've mentioned already. Um, I might try to make another one, uh, but I'm certainly not going to be paying a lot of money for those cheap clock mechanisms. I've got to find a different source, maybe Lee Valley or something. I have some that are a little better quality than that. Um, so, what else? Okay, now it's time for my little segment on the YouTube channel of the week, so watch this. So, the YouTube channel of the week is by a lady called Carolyn Duby, and uh, she has a colorful journey, is what she calls her YouTube channel, and she does all kinds of art journaling backgrounds. And the thing I like about Carolyn is that she doesn't get too uptight about what happens on the page. She truly does go with the flow. Um, she never seems to have an exact plan, but usually her pages turn out uh, very nicely. She uses a variety of products and tries them out and tells you what she's using so you can compare them with products you may know about or already have in your own stash. Um, she also runs classes through her web page as well, paid classes, I believe. But she's well worth the watch, so I highly recommend that you check out Carolyn Duby. And Carolyn is spelled C-A-R-O-L-Y-N, and her last name is spelled D-U-B-E. It's worth looking into. So, what's pissing me off this week? Okay, I've already done an unboxing. I finally got my stuff from Scrapbooking Made Simple, the place in California that had the really great sale last July. When I put in my order, I finally got it um, on Friday, and I've done an unboxing of it. And you'll hear all the kinds of comments that I have to make about this particular company. Um, so if you're interested, or if you're still waiting, and there were a few people who have already commented on the video that they're still waiting for their stuff to come from this place, um, you might be interested in seeing that. That leads me into this week's little rant here, and it has to do with Michaels. Now, we have Michaels in Canada. I know there are Michaels in the States. They are probably our go-to stores for any of our art and crafting needs. 
And they entice us into the store, of course, by issuing multiple coupons every week for 40% off a single item, for 50% off a single item. Um, on the rare occasion, you get a 55% off on a single item. Okay, who doesn't want 40% off and, and up? We all do, and they know that. And that's why they issue these coupons to us all the time to get us into the store. Because they know once they have us in the store, we're probably not going to buy one item. We're going to buy other items. And the other items are going to be at regular price, probably. Um, there's all kinds of rules and regulations and stipulations stuck on these coupons. You can't use them on certain products. Like you can't use them on magazines. You can't use them for classes. You can't use them on anything like any crickets or silhouettes and all that kind of stuff. And Michaels has now put in a new feature in their store. It's called Everyday Value. So you'll see these little signs poking out uh, from the shelves, pointing out at, you know, the kind of things that are basically staples for us, like glues and canvases and brushes and paints and things like that. And they call that Everyday Value, which means that you cannot use a coupon for those items. You also know you can't use the coupon on anything that's on sale, except occasionally they will have a 25% off your entire order, including sale items. Um, now, it'll be interesting to see if you can use those on everyday value as well. I don't know. Um, but this is how they get you. We all know this. Now, I know because I worked for a couple of years for uh, a retail store, in scrapbooking, you've heard me mention it before, and I know how much of a markup there is on crafting supplies. It's incredible, the markup. I'm sure this isn't anything new to anybody who's been doing this for a while. Um, sure, companies have to make a profit. Now, the store that I work for, she was making a profit, but she wasn't being greedy about it. She had a reasonable markup but not Michael's. I can tell you this for a fact because Michael's gets their supplies from the same distributor that the that the uh, store I work for got got them from or gets them from, and so I know what the what the distributor uh, is is charging. Michael's markup on many of the items is well over a hundred percent, more like a hundred and fifty to two hundred percent or more. In fact, I know that it's even more because they buy in such volume that they get an even better price on, on their stuff when it comes in. So yes, they can afford to give you 40% or 50% off a single item. Uh, that's already worked into their price. They're not losing a dime on that. In fact, they're making money by doing that. It's very clever, very clever indeed. So, what pisses me off, though, is how something like that, how stores in general, big corporations, gouge us. Really. Those big stores thrive off of volume sales. Also, a store like Michael's, <coughs> excuse me, is really almost the only ball game in town, in my area. Um, I know in the States, you have a bigger selection of stores than we do. Um, you have Joann's. We do not have Joann's. Um, every time I go to the States, uh, I'll try to get into a Joann's because although Joann's is very much like Michael's, I find their prices a little better and I find and I get their coupons uh, by email all the time. So actually, I've gotten some really good deals at Joann's. I cannot say the same for Michael's. Also, there's Hobby Lobby, although they don't seem they seem to be a little bit more um, far and few in between. So I guess there are probably not as many stores as like Joann's and Michael's. Um, I think I've only been to a Hobby Lobby once because wherever it was I was traveling in the States, there didn't seem to be a Hobby Lobby conveniently close to where I was staying. Um, so I haven't had a lot of experience with them. I used to order things online from Joann's too, but they stopped shipping to Canada. I don't know why. They said they might resume someday in the future. They were very sorry about this, but they don't ship to Canada anymore. So there must have been a cost factor in there. I mean, it all comes down to money, doesn't it? So back to Michael's. 
The other thing that pisses me off about Michaels is, okay, you're going to charge me for all of this stuff. Why don't you have quality stuff? Their recollections line is shit. Quite frankly, it's shit. Um, the paper quality is cheap. Uh, the cardstock is cheap. Their um, own products, which they copy from other name brand, are cheap. And when I say cheap, I mean cheap in quality. Um, they're not cheap in price. No, they're, they're slightly less than the brand name. You know, their no name kind of stuff is a little cheaper. But you get what you pay for, I guess. Um, the other thing I can't stand about Michaels is their, uh, their help. Their help is pleasant, but doesn't have a clue. You can never find anybody that, one, knows where anything is in the store. Two, knows anything about the product. Now, yeah, okay, I know there's a lot to know. There's so many products. How can you know something about everything? Well, if you really care about your job, if you're really interested, you put take it upon yourself to educate yourself. When I worked at the scrapbooking store, we had lots of products too. Anytime a new product came on the market that we got at the store, I would get it, I would play with it, I would learn about it. So I didn't so I could tell the customer about it and let them know from my own personal experiences how it works out. In fact, and this is one thing that made uh working at Class Act so great, the owner said, if we don't like the product, we're not going to carry it. We're not going to sell something to people that we can't stand behind. Not so with Michaels. Um, there are many times when I have helped customers at Michaels, believe it or not, and I don't work there. I'm just shopping. But I've had them, I don't know, maybe I look like somebody who knows something in, in Michaels. Or maybe it's just a rarity because I'm a man and I'm standing in the scrapbooking section. I don't know. But I've had people come up to me on more than one occasion and ask me, Hi, excuse me, can you tell me something about this product? And I'll say to them, well, I don't work here. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, it's, it's okay, but I have used it. Um, so yeah, I'll give you my opinion of it and give you some tips and tricks. I don't mind sharing that information. I mean, after all, I do YouTube videos for the same reason, to share information. Uh, you know, uh, what, are they, what was that old expression they used to use on television commercials or something? A educated consumer is our best customer. So that's the way I look at it. Um, but anyways, we're trapped with Michaels. I go there, but you can make it work for you too. To a point, plan your coupon strategy. All right. Sometimes you will have two coupons. Uh, say you have a 45% off and a 50% off. But depending on the cashier, the store policy is you can only use one coupon per visit. Fine. There are two items I want. I have gone up to the counter, put the two items down, put the coupons on both of them, say, can I do this? And they and I have had them say, well, I'm really not supposed to do this, but they'll do it. They'll go through. And, and several of the cashiers know who I am by sight kind of a thing because I'm there often enough. And so they kind of do that for me. But I have other ones who are strictly by the book. So, easy. I go up with my first item, I pay for it, I go out to my car, I put it away, I come back into the store, I get the second item, I go up, I use the coupon again. Yes, it's a bit of a pain in the butt to do that. And make sure you do it when you have lots of time to do it, because you know, at least at the Michaels I shop at, the lines are infamously long, especially on days when they've got a special coupon, a 50% off from, you know, nine o'clock till one o'clock kind of a deal. The lineup will be humongous and it seems to take them forever to check you out. Um, so that's another strategy. If you're going to go to Michael's, make it an event. Don't squeeze it in between grocery shopping and getting to the liquor store, okay? Um, plan to be there for a while. Look around at the items too. Um, Yes, the coupons are used to get you into the store, and it works. It gets me. Now, remember, I said when I redid my craft room, I was not going to be buying a lot of new stuff again. Okay, I have been holding pretty true to that. 
But now what I do is I will go in and I will check. If I've got a 50% coupon off, I will check around and see if there's a high price ticketed item that I can use that on that is something I really want. I just don't go into the store and use the coupon just for the sake of using the coupon. That's what they want you to do. But for example, I have a, a large Xyron and it takes the big rolls. Um, Michaels, my Michaels, half the time never seems to have the permanent adhesive replacement roll in stock. So on times like that when I've got one of those major coupons, because they're 50 bucks a roll, I will use the 50% or the 55% off purposely in there and I'll, if I can find, if they happen to have the roll there. In fact, I've been doing that so often lately, I think I can stop now because I've got them pretty much stockpiled. I think I have enough Xyron material to last me for a while. But that's what I mean. Plan it. Use your strategy uh, with this. And do make sure that you check out whether or not it's an everyday va value item thing. Because... What they're hoping you're going to do is you're going to walk up to the counter, you've got this thing, you present them with the coupon, and they're going to say, I'm sorry, that's one of our everyday value items. Coupons can't be used for this. So there you stand and you have to make a snap decision. Do I want it bad enough that I'm going to pay the full price? Or am I going to say, well, forget it, then I don't want it. Nine times out of ten, people, because there's people behind you in line, you're feeling a little pressured, you're feeling a little embarrassed, you'll buy the item and pay the full price. And they're counting on that. So go in with a strategy and you can probably make the coupons at least work for you. Um, it's too bad that it comes down to that, but hey, I guess that's the price of doing business or whatever. Okay, that was this week's What's Pissing Me Off. Um, new products? Nothing really. This is probably not that exciting to most people, but I find it exciting. I got myself something called a tube ringer. Now, I saw this on Barb Owen's uh, YouTube channel. And what it is is essentially squeezing out paint. So here you go. See, it opens up like this. you got these little wheelie things in here. So you put your paint tube in there, squeeze it, and then hard to show it on here but do it this way and it just pushes it down pushes your paint up to the tube and bang you go so this way you're not wasting a lot of paint this little thing will also work with any tubes of hair products it'll work with a toothpaste thing as well you can get them in different sizes I think there's one smaller than this there's all kinds of them actually I went on Amazon that's where I found it. Not expensive. I think this one, you can get plastic ones, but I thought metal would be a little better. This is aluminum. Um, it would hold up. I, I'm afraid the, the plastic ones you get in there, it's going to crack. It's going to break. I think this was $11 Canadian, something like that. There were cheaper ones. Uh, I kind of went, and there were a lot more expensive ones too, which didn't look that much different from this one so I don't know why they were that much more expensive but you gotta know your prices on Amazon too because actually Amazon will get, gouge you too they have sort of a Michaels mentality so you need to know your prices so anyways that's my exciting little tool for this week okay can't wait to use it save on paint and toothpaste okay so what's been happening this last week well yesterday was Saturday because I'm filming this on a Sunday and so at this time of the year on the Victoria holiday weekend the long weekend uh, there's a little pit place about an hour and 15 minutes to the east of us it's called Warkworth and it's just a small little community little village and they have something every year at this time called art in the park and this is where local artisans uh, sell what they've been making uh, paintings home decor items uh, and a lot of jewelry so if you like jewelry, there's a lot of really neat stuff there. Um, it's not huge. It usually only takes us about, it takes us an hour and 15 minutes to get there. It takes us 15 minutes to walk around and check everything out. Okay, so, but it's a cute little community. Um, it's got some cute little artsy type stores in it and that kind of thing. Um, so we did that yesterday. Didn't buy anything. Actually, I was looking forward to get getting these gourmet shortbread cookies that, that uh, there's a, a guy started this business 
uh, down there. It's actually, it's, it's been a real booming business. Um, and he always has a stand at this uh, art in the park, and he sells these cookies. And they're great. They come in really neat flavors. They're shortbread, but he has cheese ones and cheese and bacon, and like he has a bunch of savory ones, and he has sweet ones like double chocolate and all kinds of lemon. Oh, the lemon ones are really good, too. They're all good. And usually you can get about four boxes of these for 20 bucks. I think that's the special. Four boxes for 20 bucks or something like that. I was all prepared to go down and stock up on these cookies. He wasn't there. So, no cookies. Oh, well. There's always next year, maybe. Um, I think I can actually order them online or whatever. So, what else? Oh, I went to a lecture at the... Uh, Robert McLaughlin Gallery this week. You know I'm a, a docent there uh, on the education team. I do tours. And uh, there was a special event about how to understand abstract painting. And right now we have all kinds of abstract painting happening in the art gallery. And you also know that I've got a, I've got a real interest in abstract painting. So I thought this would be an opportunity to learn something about abstract painting. I thought it was going to be an opportunity to learn something about abstract painting. Um, the person leading the group, um, no complaints at all with her. She was trying to educate us. Biggest problem was the people that came out for it. Now, we were a very small group. There were only maybe about 10 of us there. But we had one woman who came in who was right off the bat on the war path. I don't understand why she was there. She says, I don't understand abstract painting. I'm a figure uh, painter. Um, I know good art, but it, good art is figure painting, not abstract. Okay, why are you here then? If you obviously have a hate on for abstract painting, you're obviously not open to learning anything about it. But then she started to go on and on about her painting and how good it was and all that stuff. And sometimes... Did I mention there was wine involved? Yeah, there was wine involved. You, you could have... There was a, a cash bar. And uh, so by the time I gotten halfway through my second glass. I pretty much had it with this woman. And so I made some kind of comment about why she was there. In our, I can't remember what I said. Um, it was sarcastic. I kind of laughed at the end of it. And uh, and then I said to her, well, sorry, I said, um, I've had a second, I've had two glasses of wine. And at this point, I have no filter. <laughs> she walked away. Good. Walk far away from me. Because I'm there to learn. Okay? There was another guy. He's an art teacher. Every time the leader of the group who was trying to educate us about some part of abstract art, he had to put in his two cents worth about, well, this is what he does, and this is what he teaches, and all that. Okay, great, wonderful. Then why are you there? You obviously know everything there is to know about abstract art, and you teach it bully for you. Then there was this other woman, and I felt sorry for her. I don't get it. She kept looking at things going, I don't get it. Can you tell me what I'm supposed to get? I don't understand this. I want to understand this. I don't get it. Why did they pick those two little squares with a color dot in the center? I don't get it. So the experts tried to explain it to her. I hadn't heard so much crap in my life. So I finally looked at her and said, the fact that you're not getting it means that you have a genuine response to it and you can't always get it. That's the beauty of looking at abstract art. You're exploring the possibilities. It might work for you, or a particular piece might work for you, a particular piece might not work for you. You know, I love what I did here. Can I explain it to you? No. That's why I made a video to show you the process of how I did it. But I can't explain this to you. Does this mean something to me? On a subconscious level, it probably does. But really, if you're looking at it and you like it, you're engaged with it, it brings up memories, emotions, thoughts for you, whatever, if it tells you a story, then great. And if it doesn't do anything for you, great. That's okay. It's a genuine response. So, again, I think I was finishing the first glass of wine at this point. This woman was going on and on, and she genuinely wanted to learn. And I felt sorry for her because I felt that she felt embarrassed amongst some other people who seemed to know everything there was to know. Um, and in my opinion, did not. Um, 
I said to her, well, you see that wall space there is kind of narrow, so the curator probably figured, hey, I've got a couple of these square things. They'd fit in there fine and fill in the space. Yay. She kind of got it. Uh, the ones that were more intellectual, I got poo-pooed. Well, they didn't say poo-poo. They just gave me this look, rolled the eyes like, yeah, amateur. Yes, I am. And damn proud of it. I'm there to learn. So anyways, it was an interesting evening. I did learn a few things, and that's all I wanted. And that's what I got. Plus two glasses of wine. Yay! Bonus all the way around. Okay, so what's coming up in the next week? Well, as I told you, tomorrow's the big upgrade. We're getting rid of our satellite, and we're going for um, what they call from Bell f uh, Fibe, fiber optics. Um, getting a new modem. It's supposed to have 12 antennas built into it, so better coverage. The one I have right now only has six. And believe me, better coverage is good because I have probably about 22 different wireless things in my house that run off of that modem. So, yeah, I'm a high-end user. And it's going to be twice as fast. I get 25 megabytes per second right now. I'm paying a little extra for this, but I'm going to get 50 megabytes per second. Again, high-end user. I'm hoping I'm going to see a difference. On top of it all, it's supposed to save us about $25 a month from what we pay now with all the combination of the modem, the TVs, and whatnot. But the one thing I'm a little concerned about, I have four television sets. We're getting two boxes. One box is wireless. And they advertise that you can move your TV anywhere when you have this wireless box and see TV. What they don't tell you is it still has to be hooked into that TV you're moving around. Yes, it's wireless because it picks up the signal from the main box, but it's not a question of you just picking up your TV set and putting it out in your patio and bang, you got TV. you got to pick up your TV set, make sure it's hooked in to the wireless box, which means it has to be plugged into a power source, the whole bit, and plugged into the TV. Then you can move it out on your patio. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm not planning on moving my TV to the patio. However, I have two other TV sets that right now all have their own little box for the satellite. I'm not going to have that with five. The guy on the phone told me that if you have Apple TV, which I have three of, you can download the app and onto your Apple TV and bang, you get your channels and the whole bit. All right, fine. Only one hitch here. I have one Apple 4, two Apple 3s. The Apple 4s you can download and install apps onto. The Apple 3s, you cannot do that unless you jailbreak them. And if you don't know what jailbreaking is, it just means basically going in and using a, a third-party program to rewrite the stuff that's already built into it by Apple, and then you lose your warranty and all that kind of stuff. And I have tried it before, and yeah, it works, but really, no. I don't want to screw around with that. I asked the guy on the phone, he says, so will this app work on an Apple 3 as well as an Apple 4? My, his answer was, it'll work on all generations of Apple. And I said, you're sure about that? He said, yes, it will. I said, fine. Got thinking about it yesterday. They called me yesterday to confirm the appointment uh, time for tomorrow. And while they were on the phone, I mentioned I had this worry about this not working. The guy says, well, I really don't know, sir. I just do the confirmations. Yes, of course, you only do the confirmations. I'll, tech you, I'll connect you to our technical part, uh, department. It'll probably take about a couple of minutes. Ten minutes later. You know, we're, at, we're experiencing an unusual volume of callers. Please, your port call is important to us. Please hold the line, and it's in priority sequence, and blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. Finally got somebody. He tried to read off his script. Oh, I love it when they do that. Basically could not answer my question. Well, he'd have to connect me with somebody else who could. Fine. Again, another 10, 15 minutes of listening to horrible Muzak that cuts in and cuts out. I get this woman on there. She's reading from her script. I said, I understand this, I understand that. Yes, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. Can't get a word in edgewise with these people either. So I turned around and said, look, this is all I want to know. 
Will you confirm for me that Apple 3 will not work with the 5 app? Well, I really don't know, sir. To be honest with you, she kept saying, I expect you to be honest with me. Uh, does that mean that you usually lie? Whatever. And I know they do. She says, well, when the technician comes out tomorrow or on Monday, um, he'll know. You can ask him. Well, isn't that a little late? Anyways, I said, fine, great, thanks for your help, bye-bye, have a nice life, drop dead, goodbye. Okay, so we wait for the technician who will come tomorrow, and he's going to tell me what I already know. I have a way to work around this, but I'm not going to tell them that. The other thing, too, is, just to add a little bit of frosting to this whole cake, I get an email from them asking me about my uh, my recent experience with their, their uh, telephone support system had four questions. Had a scale, right? On each one, I, I check the, the lowest scale, meaning not likely, won't do this. Then there's a comment box. So I wrote them an extensive comment. Basically told them what I've told you. And I also, to sweeten the deal up a little bit, because you're not the only ball game in tell, town, pal, I turned around and said to him, and depending on what happens tomorrow when or on Monday when uh, the technician comes out to install all of this, I may be switching my service to Rogers. They're the competition, for those of you that don't live here in Canada. Um, so, we'll see if I get any kind of reply from Bell to that. Um, my thoughts are, no, not going to happen. Now, I know when the guy comes out to install it tomorrow, he probably will be very knowledgeable about stuff, because this is what he does. So he and I will have a little chat before he starts with everything, and, and we'll go from there. Anyways, if I want to be a real prick and not beneath me to do so, maybe I can weasel out of them another wireless box for free. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It depends. You know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And so, I'm a little rusty. Anyways, that was this week. Um, final notes. Do I have any? I'll let you know about my adventure with the upgrade uh, on the blog for it next Monday. So, I hope you enjoyed the rest of your weekend. This will probably go up later today. And we'll talk to you late next week. Bye-bye.